I'm Nick Westergaard, and this is On Brand, helping you tell your story. My guest this week is Rebecca Jolly. Music is the biggest passion point. And, you know, we talked about how it resonates in ads and things, but if you get a music campaign right, it can be the most powerful way to connect with an audience. So rather than kind of back away from it out of just not knowing where to start with it, I think there's this point in time when it makes sense to really bring experts in to be able to help your brand find its way and find that music scene that really, really fits the brand and connects your brand to the audience. Because if you do, it's going to play dividends. Rebecca Jolly is a global business consultant focused on innovative brand solutions across the music, publishing, and entertainment industries, utilizing the power of music to drive growth, connect with audiences, and as a vehicle for change and impact. She's worked for and with music entities, including Beatport, Spotify, SFX Entertainment, Mixmag, and Massive Music in New York, London, and Amsterdam. Her brand work extends into some of the biggest global consumer brands, including Microsoft, Budweiser, Samsung, Diageo, and New Balance. Rebecca's work has been featured in Billboard, Entrepreneur, and Music Week. My interview with Rebecca Jolly is coming right up, but first... As a business-to-business marketer, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful manner. On LinkedIn, you'll have access to and build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are scene level executives. You'll also be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B. And they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads is also ranked number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Hey, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. You have less than one month left to get special early bird pricing for the Creator Economy Expo 2023. This event, folks, is for content creators and entrepreneurs interested in building and growing their content-first businesses. Do not miss this show. Join over 500 bloggers, podcasters, authors, newsletter writers, speakers, consultants, and freelancers at the learning and networking event for content creators. Plan to attend May 1st through the 3rd in Cleveland, Ohio. Register now to secure early bird pricing before it disappears March 31st. Early bird pricing ends March 31st. As a special offer, you can get $100 off just for listening to MPN shows like this one. Go to cex.events to register. Use the coupon code MPN100. The address, the URL, cex.events. That's the whole thing. Type that into your browser. cex.events, the code you use, MPN100. The Creator Economy Expo, Cleveland, May 1st through the 3rd. See you there. Rebecca Jolly. Welcome to On Brand. Hi, thank you for having me. How are you? I am great, and I am excited about talking about these these two big topics that I feel like, you know, as we talk about brands and music, these are both kind of great big monoliths, and it sort of seems like they should go together, but it doesn't always seem like we have the intentionality around that as 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 we should is is that is is is, is that valid or is it, or 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 do we have it more together when it comes to brands and music well i think yes and no and i think the answer to that lies in why we we kind of wrote the book in the first place because in I, we you know we all know every brand touches music in some way whether it's fully uh, basing their cultural marketing in it or whether it's just a kind of a, some music on their social media posts or something but the the kind of cohesion of and really placing the music and brand strategy together as out of the gates I suppose um doesn't always 
uh, kind of fall as early as it should or as mindfully as it should. And we're, you know, we're, we're very conscious and we refer to this in the book of the fact that brands spend so much more money in areas like sports and in and and kind of other cultural pursuits than they do music but where but everyone actually kind of uses music so I think you know we we put this book together with a view to kind of encouraging brands to think more about how they use music a as their marketing tool and and really kind of investing in the music industry but also just kind of how they use it throughout everything they do so yeah yes (laughs) (laughs) well that really rings true when you talk especially as you kind of walked through the evolution of of even something as 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 simple as an ad or a video a lot of times we add the music last you talking about kind of the the order of events oh just just plug something in there so and yet you talk about brand strategy so how can we move some intentionality some strategy about the music associated with our brands up earlier it seems like there may be a lexicon required there that 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 we don't have. And before you get to that, I do want to mention, I feel like your, your book and bio is so new that I might not have mentioned your book in the bio. So please, if folks are wondering, boy, we're, we're behind on all of this, we need that book. Uh, if you could mention the, the, the title of the book <laughs> and then, uh, and then how we can incorporate music into our strategy. <laughs> yes, of course. Sure. Um, I, I co-authored a book, um, which came out about a month ago called how music grew Rose Brands um, wrote it alongside um, Joe Belliotti, who is best known, I suppose, for being the global head of music for Coca-Cola for a long time. Um, Joe and I have worked together in various different guises over the last kind of few decades, really, on different sides of the music and brand space. Um, and we both approach it from different angles. He, him, brand first and me culture first, typically. So we kind of came together over lockdown, actually. And we were like, why is the not really? It's so complicated sometimes. The industry is so fragmented. People aren't putting enough attention as in on it as they should do. Why is there not a kind of a tool book or something or like set of rules for how to market through music and we're like maybe we should write one so we put one together and so it's called how music grows brands the field guide because we we kind of expressly wanted to create something that was a really useful tool that was for marketers for students for people on the music side figuring out how to work with brands people on the brand side figuring out how to work with music and it really is a kind of step-by-step guide and exploration into the brand and music world and how they can work together most effectively and so kind of bringing that round to your question um we we've kind of we make a case throughout the book of the fact you know we talk a lot about different case studies of how brands work with music and and like we've referenced a lot there's some brands who really put it front and center a handful of brands who put it really front and center and who really go deep on understanding how their brands can align with and how can play with music. And then there's 99% of the other brands who, to <laughs> your point, it's a bit of an afterthought, you know. They yeah. they create whatever ad they're going to create and then think they'd better put some music to it. But this is a real kind of – it, it feel, always feels like such a wasted opportunity when it's, it, it is that kind of afterthought because – I think if we all think to a lot of the kind of brand campaigns or ads or various different things that we can remember through our history, we they're the ones that have got some kind of music or sound attached to them. They, you know, that and that replaying immediately takes you back to that brand and takes you back to whether it was that content you watched, whether it was the ad or whatever. So I think to be able to be a bit more intentional around thinking about the music and put it maybe kind of building things around music first is something that we just feel benefits a brand so much and I you know we talk a lot in the book we we kind of make a real case for there to be if a brand or for most brands really we try and make a real case for a chief music officer as a kind of critical role at a brand because I think that we but only really scratch the surface of what's possible through music because it's such a complex and fragmented industry. And I think people often go to the lowest hanging fruit or in a direction that they haven't really thought through because they just don't know where to start in the music industry. So I think 
we yeah we make a real case for a chief music officer to sit in brands to be able to kind of help them really maximize their opportunity audience growth uh sentiment through music effectively you know you made a really great point in there too that kind of highlights this disconnect and the the afterthought nature of it and yet when we look back at some of the biggest best examples of of brand moments of commercials there is more often than not a very specific piece of music that is coming back to us too it's that multi-sensory experience and coca-cola uh is is a great example of it you go yeah. back to the, the the hilltop ad with uh teaching the world to sing to right. to the uh, america the beautiful piece that they that they did uh, a few years back and i should also mention that joe was a guest uh, here a few months back too and we'll be sure to link to that episode uh in in the show notes for rebecca's as well but yeah you you start listing off even if you took me if you didn't lead with music and said well, what are the what are the what are the biggest the best ads that you can think of and i i, I i'm just thinking of how i'd answer that question and i know that there's music that there's a soundtrack to those and yet we end up in trying to create standout work uh, of our own using music as 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 an afterthought so how does it i mean is it just not thinking about it are are there are there barriers are there things getting in the way certainly there's 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 rights and other challenging things but what's what's what what are the hurdles i think there's there's all the ones you mentioned you know the <laughs> like rights and and it's really complicated with that but i think the first hurdle comes far earlier than that in in the stages of things and it's it's the fact it's kind of what drove us to write the book that I've mentioned in the first place, which was that we this industry is so fragmented and the music industry has changed. Music has changed so much. Our consumption of music over the last decade, almost more than any other kind of industry, you know, and it used to be the case that 20 years ago, 15 years ago, if you wanted to have a music campaign, if you wanted to align your brand with music, there was a a, great, a handful of artists that you could attach yourself to and it would kind of be job done. I oversimplify things here, but, you know, that was how it was. Now it's a complete, it's so different from that and so far removed. There are so many, the the industry is so complex. There are so many genres and subgenres and subgenres within that and so many different artist platforms that some artists are big on certain platforms and not on others. The the youth audience, the Gen Z audience consumes music in such a different way that there's artists that are the biggest artists with bajillions of followers that we may never have even heard of and other people won't have because there are just so many different ways to consume it. So all that said, we're just looking at this incredibly complex and fragmented industry and scene and it's enough to make people kind of give up, I think. And I think that's still why people might either throw their money at the lowest hanging fruit or the most obvious thing, but that's not where you're going to get your return from. And that's not where you're going to connect with the younger audience, this kind of elusive Gen Z audience that every brand is desperate to relate to. It's not easy to do. And, you know, brand marketeers know that through through all through other pursuits not just music you know how do you connect with that audience when there are so many different ways to do it and so many different ways that you can do it wrong really easily as well and so I, that's the kind of the first hurdle and that's why I think that the the kind of it's the first hurdle and it's enough to put people off but at the same time music is the biggest passion point and you know we talked about how it resonates in ads and things but if you get a music campaign right and if your brand aligns with music and wants to it can be the most powerful way to connect with an audience so rather than kind of back away from it out of just not knowing where to start with it I think there's there's this point in time when it makes sense to really bring experts in to be able to help your brand find its way and find that music scene that really, really fits to the brand and connects your brand to the audience. Because if you do, it's going to pay dividends. Like, I mean, I think to all the brands that I love now after kind of decades of enjoying parties or events or whatever it can be, whatever it is, and and working in the space and every brand that I love really comes through 
I think, some great music experience, whether it is a great ad or whether it's a brilliant festival or whether it's, I, I mean, yeah, anything that's touched music, I think. They're the brands that resonate still now, decades on. So, yeah, it's. I think it's worth figuring that piece out. On Brand, we'll be right back after this. Hey there, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. Real quick, I want to make sure you know that the world's leading B2B marketing expo is returning to the Los Angeles Convention Center on March 21st and 22nd. It's high time we got back together to learn, see the latest technologies and solutions, and network, right? Join thousands of marketing professionals just like you to learn from over 250 industry expert speakers, educational masterclasses, and over 300 exhibitors. And this year, your ticket also gets you into the Sales Innovation Expo and the Marketing and Advertising Expo. So it's like three conferences in one. It's March 21st and 22nd at the Los Angeles Convention Center. Go to b2bmarketingexpo.us to register. That's b2bmarketingexpo.us. The Marketing Podcast Network is a proud partner of the B2B Marketing Expo for 2023. We'll see you in LA. As a business-to-business marketer, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads in Empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful manner. On LinkedIn, you'll have access to and build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are scene level executives. You'll also be able to drive results with targeting and measurement tools built specifically for B2B. And they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn Ads is also ranked number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get a $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash MPN. Terms and conditions apply. Now, back to the show. So you talked about, uh, you know, in your approach and, and you know, Joe coming at it from the brand side, and you mentioned uh, culture first, and especially with what you said about the elusive uh, and, and much sought Gen Z audience appeal. Talk a bit about the... The cultural connection that specific music has, because you mentioned earlier, that's why a lot of people kind of throw their hands up and 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 go with you know something farmed out with little little thought, uh, some stock music that sort of sounds like something, as opposed to some of the specific connections that you talked about paying off in dividends. Uh, talk about the relationship of culture and music and the potential for brands yeah I mean well like I said Joe's background he's always kind of worked within brands but mine has always been on the music side so I've worked in for entertainment companies in it and in music media for a long time and we've you know most recently or I guess kind of for the last decade or so I I was working primarily in electronic music I worked for ID&T which is a Dutch um festival company that runs some of the biggest electronic music events in the world uh, so for the sensation mystery land tomorrowland and then that was then acquired by sfx i worked with beatport and then i worked with um mix mag the electronic music publication which is now kind of global and we with each of those we've just been creating these experiences where you have like I mean, I can remember 10, 12 years ago or so when Tomorrowland, the festival, started to become really big. And they became really big because they were one of the first festivals to adopt content. Like they used to stream, they created an after movie. And I can remember everyone always said an after movie or an after film from a show should always be two minutes and no more. And they kind of laughed in the face of that and created an hour long after movie. And it was 
that became the most watched thing on YouTube with like, I think like 80 million people watching it the first week after it was released. And they really changed that game in terms of can, how an audience could connect to something on such a mass scale through music. And I then was kind of working at, when I was at Mixmag, we were creating these incredible programs, like fully integrated programs across every different touch point through live streaming, through content, through a lot of behind the scenes work with artists, artists first content, media wrapped around that, of which millions of people were engaging with on a daily basis and so actively and so passionately. This this wasn't kind of passive engagement. This was it's all been really active. And at every point, I've worked on that side where we've been like, we need to get brands involved with that because A, a brand is going to be able to reap the benefits from it, but also brand investment into this kind of thing is just going to make us be able to do it more and make us be able to take this to many more people. So that's kind of always been my approach because I've worked on the culture side of it is like we can create these programs. And if a brand can, can come along for those rides, that cultural piece or that, if you get it right, becoming part of that moment in culture, that moment in time, whether it's establishing a new artist, whether it's creating an amazing film or telling an amazing story through culture, it, it, that's what works for that's what people love that's what people get really into so for a brand to be part of that always seems like a real no-brainer to me well and that's such a a great answer in in so many ways but especially because you know we've been focusing most of our conversation here on music as a soundtrack to brands but i love the dynamic and potential there, as you said, in terms of brands being supportive of, uh, of, of, of new music as, as well. And I, I think that that's, I mean, for me, it was a, oh yeah, it could work, could work the other way too. And I think that it, it really just reinforces that, that point that I said at the, at the top of the show that we're just, just scratching the surface in what we could do in the interconnectedness of, of, of brands and music. Yeah. Do you know, I feel like we're at a really interesting time because it's no secret that the world has changed massively over the last few years and, and it kind of all the changes that were happening in music, in the music industry side of it were really propelled over the last few years with the pandemic. And I think we're in, I, when I think to a lot of, historically over the last 10 years or so there was a real phase of brands trying to act like record labels or start record labels or things and not many of them really worked Red Bull Music Academy aside which was absolutely phenomenal and is always a kind of iconic brand and music partnership but I think we're at a really interesting time now where there's a really such a fascinating opportunity for brands to play a really different role in the music industry because and in music generally and you referenced brands being involved in new music and I think this is where the conversation can get really interesting because the landscape has changed and it's so much harder for musicians and for artists to kind of to make a real viable living through and to actually kind of rise up through the ranks of music industry and be a success you know we look at um artists from decades ago who have longevity and that's really hard to maintain these days a because this it's the volume of artists but also because you can't there's yeah I mean largely that there's so much competition but also it's just really expensive to be able to kind of get yourself heard and to get signed and things and so there's actually a really interesting role for brands to play to kind of facilitate that and I think I've talked about this quite a lot previously um like the fact that brands for years have been borrowing from music as their cultural for their cultural marketing but now that music kind of needs investment more than ever is wouldn't it be interesting to kind of turn the tables a bit and almost like brands almost have this responsibility I think after you borrowing from music for so long to actually be able to kind of invest back into that and I think the brands that now step forward and really show up and really invest in that grassroots building artists like taking them forward in their careers are going to be able to really get that kind of affinity with the audience and that that 
groundswell of support, I think, um, that's going to help them grow their brands. I mean, we call the book How Music Grows Brands. And I think now the times, it used to be the case that you could sponsor Rihanna, I don't know, uh, <laughs> spend millions of pounds on that. But now the, there's a really interesting opportunity that is un- undoubtedly more complex, but to actually like be a brand that holds up the music industry and helps the wider scene move forward and what a powerful thing that could be and I think you know I, yeah I think it's a very interesting time actually in this space knowing that we are on the heels of me asking you for a brand that's made you smile recently I hesitate to uh, ask you to 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 name another brand at the risk of cannibalizing that <laughs> But uh, are there are there examples of brands that really get what we've been talking about the, of the dynamic relationship between music and brands and have really integrated things in in a smart way that you point to a lot in the book and say, yep, like like this brand. Yeah, I think there were a lot more a, a few years ago. I think that. Um, I think the ones, the kind of front runners in the scene were always the brands like Smirnoff, like Budweiser, like Samsung, who always really kind of were synonymous with with music and investing in music. And they did it really well. A lot, everyone pulled, a lot of people pulled back a few years ago and people also started to hedge, I think, their investments and their bets. And I think um, there were a couple of great brands, brands like Jägermeister, I think, had a really important role in the pandemic. They invested quite heavily in venues and keeping venues open and things. And I think, but I, I mean, to kind of what we were just speaking to, I think now is a bit of a kind of a strange position where everyone is figuring out what they look like moving forwards. And, and a lot of the legacy music brands or brands that invested in music have definitely shifted strategy recently. And I think there's a lot more focus on just shifting product. Um, so yeah, I mean, I haven't, the the one, like I mentioned, the one that always stands out and always will do is, uh, Red Bull Music Academy is, but again, that was a long time ago now. That is a a great example and certainly an interesting kind of, kind of update to all of this too. So I, uh, hopefully this is a concept that has, has, has found its time, uh, after navigating through this challenging period of 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 folks pulling back too so yeah now the question you've been dreading (laughs) a brand rebecca that has made you smile recently whether it's through music or anything else (laughs) well i was gonna say i mean it's always challenging being put on the spot and i was i was gonna say i it should probably relate to a brand that's done something in music but i I mean, maybe to my previous point, it, there aren't that many at the moment, and but hopefully there will be moving forward. But all that said, there's a brand, and actually I will caveat this by saying I'm in England, um, and I don't know if this is a brand in the US or not actually, but um, Minor Figures Milk, do you know the milk alternative? No. This is, oh, I mean, it's like an Oatly, but it's a different one. Okay. They are yeah, just, no so they make me smile on a daily basis because they are so irreverent and they're, they're a milk and they've just always had this really funny visual identity, which is almost like someone wearing a chicken suit. It's like a sketch drawing <laughs> of someone in a chicken suit, but their whole... And inexplicably, I have no idea why that is their reference, but their their visual identity. But they their their social media is just so funny and irreverent, and they do lots of like ASMR with like ducks, <laughs> like rubber ducks falling, and they just they just funny. They they serve such a purpose in the complex and and not quite cheerful world <laughs> at times by just cutting through that with just something really silly. And I I really like a brand like that catches my attention and makes me smile just because. Like, why not? Why not have rub- loads of rubber ducks falling on your head to enjoy it <laughs> every once in a while? You know, there is absolutely no requirement to what type of smile or what it is. I love hearing about different examples, even if it is. Well, I encourage you to follow them on social media because it's just lots. The one common thread through all their communications is just ducks in different situations and different, <laughs> different guises. Um, so, yes. 
that, that I would say would be my brand that's made me smile most recently. Well, this sounds amazing. <laughs> so where can folks go, Rebecca, to learn more about who you are and what you do? Um, you can go to howmusicgrowsbrands.com. Um, which is a site for our um, book, but also contains lots of kind of interviews we've done, but and also connects to our socials like LinkedIn and things. So, so yes, there. Awesome. Well, we will link up to that in our show notes, which folks can find at onbrandpodcast.com. Rebecca, thanks for being on brand with us. Thank you so much for having me. It's been lovely to chat. <laughs> On Brand is part of the Marketing Podcast Network. If you like what you're hearing, if we've made you smile, you can always listen free on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or whatever your favorite platform may be. And please take a moment and rate and review the podcast to help others find the show. Until next week, I'm Nick Westergaard, and I'll see you on the internet. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.